Hey guys, it's Adam AK Swimming Bird, and I'm very excited to bring you new info, footage, and my hands-on impressions for Splatoon 2, the brand new game coming out this summer on Nintendo Switch. This is the demo version, though. I was extremely fortunate to be able to be one of the first in the world to play this game. Nintendo was very kind. They flew me out to New York City. They provide travel and accommodations and everything. But we only have 10 minutes. I'm allowed to talk about this, so let's go, go, go. We're going to start with some footage from the developers playing the demo with a nice range of all the new weapons and things. Then we will switch over to, no pun intended, to my own footage that I recorded. You'll see a lot more of the new Splat Dooley's weapon. And we'll finish up with the trailer from the Switch presentation, which shows more of the world of Splatoon 2 and some of the story and things like that, stuff you wouldn't see in the demo. So we're going to start with the first of the four sets here, the Splat Charger. Now, you'll notice there's a light on the back that glows brighter as you charge up your shot. This makes you a huge target because you will be glowing and like a huge lens flare, but the advantage is that you can now go into squid form and become much more mobile, versatile, and deadly with this charger because you can store that full charge when you move around. These are the splat dualies, and as you can see here, it has a tactical roll. You can do up to two of these when you're firing and you hit the B button. That's the new jump button. But it's a dual-wielding pistol weapon that has two, tar two targeting reticles, and after you roll, they condense into one for a more focused, fast firing, just for a you know a split second there. But you do that much more damage. Great way to get out of the way of charger shots or incorrect, you know, roll around your opponent before they know what hit them. Here's one of the four new specials in the demo: the splashdown. And say goodbye to everyone trying to camp you for an easy kill when you super jump, because you can go right into the middle of battle and slam down. Now it's not as powerful when you're on the ground. You want to use it when you're super jumping, but it still works to get people off of you if you're on the ground. This is the splat roller using a new vertical ink fling flick when you jump. You still get the horizontal widespread when you're not jumping, or you can start it up and I think jump after to still get that with a little distance, but the new vertical flick is much better at shooting a longer line with less spread, but gives a little bit of distance that the roller's needed. The other sets here we have the splatter shot, which is largely the same, the weapon that we, you know, most of us are used to. There's the splashdown when you're on the ground. And uh, the charger, of course, has that change. The splat dualies is brand new, but all of the specials are brand new in this game. The developers have said no specials returning. They're completely rebalancing it because now we no longer use the touchscreen. You can play portably or on the TV, so no longer is the touchscreen needed. That also means super jumping is revamped as well. So you now hit X to pop up the map. There's an overlay with the map, and you can still kind of see the battle behind you. Then you hit the directional buttons to super jump to whatever buddy that you want to on your team, or you can hit down. Down is always the spawn point, and you can super jump that way. You have to hit A to confirm once you lock on after holding a direction, so it's a little more complicated. We'll get used to it, though, I believe. So here is the ending to this match, and you get to see a new character. People have been calling him Baby Judd or Judd Jr. Who knows how Judd found love? He's the only cat left in the world. It's a little kitten, and it's adorable. Lessens the blow when you lose because he's always on the bad guy side. All right, so here is my footage of me actually playing at the event with the Splat Dooleys. We also have some live music that was played at the Japanese event. The musicians from Splatoon, this is a new fictional band called Wet Floor with the main theme for Splatoon 2, Incoming. That's the Japanese title, so it'll probably change. Some of this stuff is gonna change. I know for sure that the Splatter Shot special, the Tenta Missiles, that's a tentative name the developers even said on the treehouse. And we'll get to see that here. You might have noticed it. It was these huge launchers that you pick up on either side. You can lock up onto up to four opponents and use those to blast out up to 16 missiles. They rain down. They take a little bit to, to land, but it's almost like a new ink strike that's focused on your opponents. This is the ink jet, like the printer, the special for the Splat Dooleys. You hover up in the air almost like you're wearing a flood from Super Mario Sunshine. This series, of course, very heavily inspired by Sunshine. But yeah, you hover above the ground. The distance you hover is based on the ground below you, so as you'll see a little later, do not go down into lower ground like this trench here in the middle of this new map, the reef, the first new map revealed. But yeah, if you go to lower ground, you can't hover as high, and I think that's also a measure to prevent people from getting into enemy spawn points and camping and stuff like that. But it does raise you up in the air for a limited time. You get these blaster-like shots that are very powerful. As long as you hit around your opponent, you'll probably take them out but you are a huge target 
and you'll see several clips of me taking out people absentmindedly using the inkjet, not being aware, because you, of course, are flying in the sky. People could take you out. Chargers will just eat you up if you're not careful. When you finish, this is interesting, you super jump back to where you started using your special, as long as it's your own ink. If the enemy covers that ink, you will super jump or just flip through the air to your nearest home ink that was around where you started your special. Now, you'll see in a little bit too that if you ink jet and then you're in the middle of that jump at the end and you, the enemy inks up where you were, you'll still jump right into their ink. So you gotta be careful, make sure no one is watching you when you lift off, don't you know? Don't get self-conscious about it, but if someone's watching you, they could sit there and wait for you to be done. And here is a big faux pas for me. This is one of my first matches, though, with the Dooleys. I went down to the lower terrain, put myself right at the perfect level for them to just nail me with ink when I was flying right in the perfect spot next to the bridge. So yeah, gotta be careful. I think the theme of these specials is powerful, but not overpowered. I'm glad to see that they're doing a lot of stuff to balance them good and bad benefits and disadvantages for each of these. But all the old weapons are gonna be returning. I don't want anybody to be worried about that because some of the subs are returning, but the developers did say old weapons are returning, including the slosher and the splatling and things like that. Hopefully my brushes. So don't worry, the specials are the only things that they are completely revamping, but it does make sense because, you know, they got this new system. So yeah, the splat dualies. Oh man, speaking of the brushes, I feel like the splat dualies are gonna outrank the brushes when this game comes out as my new favorite because you can see I can dip around and jump all over the place. I really love the inkjet, but the, the mobility, the ability to dodge shots, splat dualies don't have the most distance, of course, because they are kind of close range, a little wider, almost like the Splattershot Junior of this game, but they've got a lot more utility with them with that burst of ink used up to, to roll around here. And you're about to see the Charger Special, the last one that I haven't talked about. There's more footage to, to, uh, to follow here of the specials, but I wanna focus on the Charger Special, the Stingray. Now this is a, a condensed beam that kinda fires like the Splatling. You're very slow to turn, so you wanna make sure you know where your opponents are. But the advantage is, it is so powerful that it just goes through walls. The Stingray can pierce walls and hit anybody hiding, but as you can see, very slow to turn. So if your opponents are all hiding from you, like a charger is camping behind a wall with a charge ready, you can hit them through the wall. It's almost like the killer whale. I got to play a little bit on the portable mode with the Joy-Cons. Here's the controls. I did notice the stick seemed a little bit smaller compared to the, the Pro Controller. I was accidentally clicking in the right stick occasionally. Now that it's lower, it was a little tough to get used to, and I was using my special on accident. But things like the splatter shot felt just like they used to, like riding a bike, you know, felt very familiar. And uh, the Pro Controller, I have to say, that is probably the most comfortable, easy to use controller I have ever held in my gamer hands because, you know, no, no exaggeration. I do like the PS4 controller, which I think is maybe second best there, but the, uh, the Pro Controller for the, the Switch just forms around my hands a lot better, especially compared to the portable mode. That's what I'm probably gonna be using to play. There is the Tenta Missiles there, tentative title, of course, no pun intended, even though they're all over this game. But yeah, the Tenta missiles uh, launch those little reticles that shoot, you know, you want to take your time with that. You can shoot the whole squad if you manage to get them all locked on. And then uh, as long as they're not going to get out of the way, you are good to go. We're getting to the end here, though, of my footage. I, an I managed to win an Inkling Girl plush by doing really good in my match. I, I was a good, good squid kid, and I got this for getting a high score. Some other things I noticed, all the demo gear, ink recovery up, quick respawn, special saver, just like the test fire. But I noticed the fake contacts now had ink recovery up instead of special charge up. They're changing the abilities around. There's pants, but they are not listed on the gear abilities, meaning they might just be with the, the shirt and not have abilities of their own. We might be able to customize them. The weapons are listed up at the top, and you can see, you know, with the player status in the match, this way is the new command instead of come on to clear up confusion. You saw a new map there. This is the reef, but there was a rock climbing wall gym. There's also an outdoor concert venue I noticed, and old maps are returning as well. There's the concert. You'll see Moray Towers here. There's that gym. Has ink rails from single player, so they're revamping older maps and giving them new functions. I have to say a few things that the, uh, the gyro controls felt much more improved. The weight of the controllers, both styles that I played were really comfy and uh, worked well as, in terms of turning the screen and turning the gyro around. There's the curling bomb, a new sub-weapon that I didn't mention yet, 
that is on the splat roller. You can charge it up to make it go longer. It bounces around rather than explodes when it hits something like a Seeker. It does explode when it hits a player, like so. It takes place two years after Splatoon, the first one, and uh, that makes sense because it is two years after. There's Inkopolis Square, which is the new Times Square New York City vibe. There's pigeons instead of sparrows. There's a, uh, a bomb rush launcher that looks like the old Ultra Machine Nintendo toy. A bomb that's kind of like cloud seeding special that has a, uh, a rain down of ink that'll move across the map. Lots of cool stuff. But again, if you want to hear more of my thoughts, I did a huge stream of two hours. I go way in depth on this stuff. I'll link that at the end. If you want to leave a like and subscribe, I appreciate it. Marie looking wistful. Maybe the Squid Sisters broke up. Krusty Sean in a food truck. That is all for now. Thanks for watching.